Today's episode of Your Diet Bestie is sponsored by Sacred Glucose Stabilizer. Balancing blood sugars can be difficult, and I know that seeing post-meal high blood sugars gets extremely frustrated. So I have been taking Sacred for about a month now, and it is really impressive, the effects that I'm finding on my blood sugar numbers after my meals. Instead of my usual roller coaster and arrow straight up on my CGM, I've noticed straighter curves in my glucose and less post-meal bloat. Sigrid Glucose Stabilizer uses Cypor technology. It's a natural silica-based treatment, and it is backed by 10 years of clinical research. It's pretty fantastic. This all-natural supplement is specifically designed to help lower blood sugar levels and support a healthier lifestyle, and they were just featured in Forbes and the Daily Mail for this incredible technology. So if you're living with diabetes or you're just looking to better your overall health, I would say try it for yourself. You can visit sacredstabilizer.com slash hangrywoman and enter the code hangrywoman when you check out for 15% off of your purchase. That is sacredstabilizer.com slash hangrywoman and use the code hangrywoman when you check out for 15% off of your entire purchase. Welcome to Your Diabestie, the podcast that ensures you don't have to do diabetes alone. I'm your host, Mila Clark. I live with latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. And today's episode is going to be very reflective. It is the last week of the year. It doesn't feel like it could happen. It It's kind of mind-blowing when I think about how much this year has just flown by and how much has happened in this entire year. I think for me, 2023 was a much better year than 2022 was, but it was also just a challenging year for me personally in my health, in my business, in all of the like major areas of my life. I feel like 2023 was a down year and 2024 is going to be the comeback. When I tell you, I just, I invested a lot in myself and in my business and really, you know, that led to like literally having $5 in my bank account at the end of this year. And, you know, then next year I plan to start graduate school. So I'm getting my master's in applied nutrition. I am taking the path to become a registered dietitian. I'm really terrified about it. Honestly, I feel like it's going to be such hard work and it's, it's not all going to happen in the next year, but just like starting these steps, starting my program next year, it's an accelerated program. So like, I'm really going to have to be just on it. Um, and then, you know, signing new clients next year. If you don't know my past life, I, have been a social media manager. And so I have some consulting clients that I work with. And then I also have, you know, my business in Hangry Woman. So I have an agency. And then I also have the advocacy and coaching work that I do for Hangry Woman. So it, it's been a wild year. I feel like I've bet on myself in so many ways. And I've failed in some ways, but I've also done really well in some ways. And so like some of the things that I kind of pat myself on the back for are I created a mobile app for people with diabetes this year. Right now it is the community and learning aspect. And then in the coming months, I guess, it will have food logging and tracking. I have partnerships that I'm working with so that I can offer free health coaching to every member of my community who wants it and who signs up in the app. And then I also am just super excited because I feel like it's going to be a fantastic place for people to just get the support that they need when it comes to living with diabetes. And this is not something that I have seen anyone else doing. And I am just super excited to be able to to make that goal happen. So I mean, aside from graduating with my master's degree next year, and then starting the next part of my dietetics journey, this to me feels like my biggest goal next year is really to just like sustain glucose guide and keep it alive. And I'm kind of scared (laughs) of what that means and how I'm going to be able to do that, but it's going to happen. We're doing it. It's going to be wonderful. For the rest of this episode, I wanted to give you just some tips about setting goals because we are heading into the new year. If your only goal is to survive, 
that's a fantastic goal. You don't need to do much more than that. Everything else is icing. You don't have to grind and grind if you don't feel up to it. Surviving is absolutely enough. But if you do want to hop into some of your goals for 2024, here are some things that I feel help. First is keeping your goals realistic and making a plan. Your goals are challenging, but with those goals, you also want to set concrete milestones. So what? how do you know you're succeeding? You want to make sure that you're tracking that along. Write down your goal. Remind yourself of your why. Remind yourself every time you're thinking about your goal. You know, writing down your goal just reminds you of why you're doing what you're doing. And it's super helpful to achieve those goals and keep them at the forefront. It's also okay not to talk about your goals. You don't have to make a vision board and show it to the world. You can go about your goals quietly and make it an audience of one. You can work through it and make sure that it's something that you're comfortable with and then show the progress later. Those are That's always something you can do. You don't have to talk about your goals out loud. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. Also have a vision board, have words and affirmations that you really want to play into. Manifestation for me is something that I know it sounds very like woo woo and like, oh, you're like manifesting things into your life. But I think I really do have a bit of a belief in the law of attraction and that when you can see the goal in front of you, you see and visualize how to get there, you often are able to find a way forward. Your brain just kind of kicks into gear and helps you understand what I need to do. Having a vision board, having the ability to have some goals is something that you want to do and that you want to start. It's really important to also decide what metrics to track. So how do you know that you're succeeding? What are the things that are going to tell you that you're getting to your goal? Making sure to track those wins along the way, super important. Then break your goals down into bite sizes and then take bigger bites out of your goal when you can. So start small. You don't have to go all in. You don't have to do a 45 minute workout your first day in the gym. You can start slow, you can build up. And as you get more encouraged and you get more confident, you can start to take bigger steps and bigger strides towards those goals that you're working toward. And then revisit your goals on a regular basis. That could be monthly, could be quarterly, could be weekly, could be daily if you even want to get that granular. But when you can see how close you are to your goal and you can see where you're on track, it becomes super helpful for you to be able to reach that big end goal that you want. And along with taking steps that are bite-sized, you can also celebrate the small wins. So when you achieve small things, those things are actually like pretty big and pretty significant. Small wins along the way are just as valuable as the milestone goal. So if you do something well, say your goal is to work out four days a week and you've done four days a week straight for a month, treat yourself to something like a massage or get something for yourself that you really like. It doesn't have to be food related. It doesn't have to be related to your health, but reward yourself for those wins along the way and celebrate when you achieve those small wins. Those small wins all together equal up to big stuff and they are just as valuable and just as meaningful to celebrate as the big milestone goal that you have. And then don't beat yourself up over failure. Done is better than perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get done. And it doesn't matter if you got there in a scrappy way. It doesn't matter if you got there in the way that you intended. Just making sure that you are actually making strides and making waves in that goal that you have is super important. If you happen to miss a milestone or you didn't meet a goal that you wanted to get to, that's okay. That doesn't mean that you failed. It's just an opportunity for you to begin again, start over, and you know that you can take those steps to getting to that goal, right? So failure is not the worst thing in the world. And failing honestly teaches you a lot. I feel like I've dealt with a lot of failure lately. <laughs> And I feel like it's given me some good lessons that I can laugh about now that I was not laughing about a couple months ago. But those are just things to think about. 
And then, you know, really overall, just be confident that you're doing something good for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're setting a goal that is meaningful to you. You're setting a goal that matters to you and you're doing it for a specific purpose. Remembering why it's important to you and setting goals alongside that is just an incredibly helpful practice. I have this list out of things to think about when you're setting goals as a blog on hangrywoman.com. So I'll be sure to leave it in the show notes. But that's it for this episode of Your Diabestie. I am curious and I would love to know. You can either send it to me in email, you know, shoot it to me through my website, whatever. I want to know, you know, what is the big goal that you have for next year and how can I cheer you on? Lastly, I just want to end this episode to tell you that I am able to offer free health coaching to everyone in my Glucose Guide community. It's on a first come, first serve basis. And so the sooner you get on my calendar, the sooner you get your sessions. And really, nobody offers free health coaching. I'm telling you this. like, And I am so surprised And honestly, a little disappointed that more people haven't signed up for this opportunity because it's literally free, no strings attached. All you have to do is show up to your session and get coached. I I don't know a single coach that's offering free support like this. And like I said, I'm shocked that more people aren't taking advantage of this. So if you go to hangrywoman.com diabetes coaching, You can go to fill out the form to sign up for health coaching. It is free. There are no strings attached. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to put a credit card down. All you have to do is sign up, fill out your health questionnaire, and show up for your session. I I don't know how I can make it any easier. So if you know somebody who needs support, who needs guidance, who needs help, please, please, please be sure to tell them about my free health coaching program for people with diabetes. It is wonderful. It is just like a great way that we're going to be able to track your progress and track your ability to make progress in your health goals. And then you're also going to have somebody right there alongside you, cheering you on, sending you resources, giving you what you need. So I can't say it enough. Like you guys got to take advantage of this because the wait list, it's starting. And why not start in the new year? January is the perfect time to start. All right, that's it. If you want the transcript for this episode, visit diabestipod.com. I wish you the happiest, healthiest, most wonderful new year. I hope that all of your health goals come true. I hope that you get the support and the guidance and the love that you need. And most of all, I hope that you find a way and embrace the joy of living a life with diabetes, because even though it doesn't seem like it sometimes, there can be joy there. All right. I will see y'all in the new year. Take care. Bye.